Richard Gladwell here for Starworld. Here with Nick Holroyd, who's technical director for Emirates Team New Zealand. And behind us is the team's latest AC72. Nick, if, what's the general thrust with this boat in terms of development that's gone on and the directions those have taken? Um, I mean, we've got to remember the gestation period for this boat's pretty long. Um, so the, the design for the hulls, at, at least, uh, for tooling up at Cookson's probably... Uh, was delivered after about four or five days sailing with boat one, um, and I mean the, what we learned from boat one has has led us to a few things with this boat. We've uh, obviously you know, confirmed foiling at that point, um, and we're then able to move the hull geometry towards some of the sort of more upwind uh, speed and, and trim type ranges. So um, a little more upwind performance bias in the hull design. Um, now the other stuff that's obviously we've got a huge amount of is, is the uh, load data from uh, boat one. Uh, and so uh, nice refinements, some, some components are a little lighter, some components are a little stronger, um, and all those sort of things should lead towards more reliability. And I guess the, the sort of third aspect of, of where we've gone with this boat is, is realising early on that, that being able to push the boat hard is, is really critical to, to performance. And so. Uh, you know, features that make the boat easier to sail or, or, or allow you to actually push the boat harder when, when the conditions warrant it um, are, are all factored in here. So if you line these two boats up on a computer, how much faster do you think this one will be than the previous boat? Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put sort of hard numbers on that, but I think um, right across the range from you know, upwind um, yeah, is a little bit dominated by the hulls. Uh, yeah, there's... And the other shed from here, obviously the wing, um, and that's that's a key component in performance as well. And there's, there's a bunch of improvements happening there. Um, you know, second generation foils going into this boat. Uh, again, we'd hope to see performance increases. Uh, and then in terms of systems and, and the way the guys can handle the boat and the requests they've made and, and improving the boat to uh, to actually improve you know, total time around the course through tax and jibes. So, you know, across the board we're looking for improvement. So in terms of looking at the foils, I mean, what are we going to see there that's different? Are you going for smaller foils or bigger foils? Or uh, Again, you know, some, some dimensions shrink and others grow. Um, you know, the things you know about foils that are, that are important is span always works, but that's structurally very, very, very difficult to achieve. Um, so, no, the... the um, you know, the, the cost of foiling, I guess, is, is, is in the stability uh, that you need to generate in, in doing that. And so uh, I guess where we think we've improved is, is finding a more effective crossover between the stability to actually foil well uh, and, and low drag to go upwind. And... Will you be taking this boat to the point where it'll foil upwind? Uh, I don't think that's necessarily a, you know, a, a thing that we're looking hard at. Um, yeah, the, the VPP suggests that might be possible. I'm not sure that's necessarily the fastest uh, solution yet. Um, that, that's, a, that's an open act area for uh, investigation, I guess. What about in terms of downwind speed with the foils? Are you looking at any increases in that or just hitting the previous speeds earlier and more reliably? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, to, to maximise the foiling performance, you've got to get onto the foils quickly. Uh, and, and so it's those transitions that uh, we're looking most most at, um, and particularly to take foiling further down the range, we need to be getting on the foils very quickly. But is that a design technique thing or a, or a technique in terms of the sailing crew and, and how they use the tools they've been given? Oh, very, very much both. Uh, and and the, yeah, the you know, a lot of, lot of the discussions we've been having with Dean and the guys up through the, through the uh, testing period of boat one is, is how to uh, how their technique works with the controls we've given them, whether they need you know, finer control in, in some aspects or, or need to be able to move things faster. Uh, all those kind of things uh, add up as well as the shape of the floor. When we've spoken previously, I mean, there's been a sort of a clear emphasis that the old boat was more about the sailing science and this one's more about racing reliability. What have you really done to improve that racing reliability in this boat and in terms of ergonomics and, and that sort of thing? Um, I guess the, the system, some of the systems in the boat are probably a lot easier to handle now. Um, but again, you know, we're just we're just fortunate to have the, the broad range of data we've got uh, across you know, a huge range of conditions. 
Um, to, to, you know, the reliability comes from, from checking that your design assumptions were correct or, or correcting them if they weren't. Uh, you know, double checking your design calculations and that you're, you know, um, you're seeing the strains and the, and the components that you're expecting, etc. Um, and so we just had, a, you know, fortunate to have a lot of that time, a lot of time and a lot of data there to uh, to be moving onward. So, what's the thrust of the development with the wing sails? Uh, again, uh, control, you know, control of the shape of the sail or the wing is, is you know. Uh, like, like uh, in mainsail development in the, in the version 5 boats, I guess, you know, controlling the shape across the wind range and being able to achieve sort of desired uh, twist profiles, etc., quickly and, and reliably uh, are the main thrusts of, of that development. It's with the wing we've seen to date, it's looked um, remarkably almost like a soft mainsail in terms of the amount of twist that can take. Is that the sort of theme that you're going to continue with with the new one? Oh, I mean, the, actually, the wing sails you, you can develop significantly more twist than you can in, you know, with the, uh, and and you have an ability with the wing sails to move the centre of effort up and down much more. I and mean, that's that's the main benefit of them in, in, in this class is that uh, in, in overpowered conditions you can continue to pr bring the centre of effort down. But yeah, the the ability to really change gears very very quickly uh, and and how the control systems in the wing etc let you do that. Uh, those are some of the key things to, you know, to being at close to optimum performance 100% of the time is, is our goal. So what will the program be in the next two to three months with, in terms of design? Is there anything major on the slate or is it just incremental? Um, we, you know, we have to figure out you know, what we think uh, our racing inventory might be, what our spares inventory might be. Um, in the design terms you start really by your design program at racing against the clock in a way. Now we start to see more and more of our competitors, then you can start sort of tailoring your package to, you know, do we trade some performance here for, for, for performance in another area um, you know, to try and best optimise your chances against a specific boat. The polars you've been able to develop to date, given that this project is pretty much on the bleeding edge of technology, how close have you been able to get to those and how accurate are they when you get on the water? Um, oh, look, my, my hat's off to the guys I work with, yeah, Dan Bernasconi, who, who heads up our BPP program, um, has yeah, a, a remarkable track record in this campaign, to be honest, in, in terms of uh, performance prediction and, and, and beyond that to actually be able to tell the guys you know, before launch you know, what, the, what the settings should be in any given wind range or, or etc. Um, clearly, his his work's sort of backed up by the guys that are generating the force data from the appendages or the, the wing and what have you. So there's there's a whole you know, there's a very large group of guys involved in that uh, program. Um, but from the 33s and now uh, you know, early predictions there uh, through to some of the work we've done on the 45s. Now every every time we get to uh, I guess kind of marry real world data back to what we found in the computer is, is a golden opportunity for us to improve our skills and, and our, our ability to predict these things but no, hopefully that's been uh, one of the things that's worked really well for us from, uh, from early on in the campaign. Okay well thanks very much, all the best.